Everyone lives by faith, even atheists. This week on Creation Magazine Live. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. My name is Richard Fangrad. And I'm Calvin Smith. Now our topic this week is faith. Everyone lives by faith. There are different kinds of faith. Uh, in this next half hour, we're going to explain why everyone lives by faith mm -hmm. and to try to summarize and compare a few different kinds of faith. Uh, we'll also look at the role that faith plays in the origins debate for both creationists and evolutionists. And this is a topic where there's a huge amount of confusion, right? Absolutely. Uh -huh. Yep. Even the simple statement that everyone lives by faith is likely confusing to some of you out there, and it may take a few minutes to unpack that, but, but let's start with some definitions. Right. There was a survey done in 2014 where over 700 people were asked this question. Do you believe that when Christians use the word faith, they mean believing something even though it's not supported by evidence? Now, of the Christians who responded to the question, 91% said, uh, so the Christians responded, 91% of Christians said, no, that is right. not what we mean. And 9% agreed with that. Uh, yes, faith means believing in something, even though it's not supported by so evidence. So a small percentage of Christians. Right. Now, look at the uh, response from non-Christians. 72% think that when Christians use the uh, word faith, what... Uh, Christians really mean is believing in something even though it's not supported by evidence. That's amazing. The same yeah. word has a very different meaning depending on the group using it. So it's right. like, uh, you know, Inigo Montoya, you know, <laughs> uh, you, you keep using this word. I don't think it means what you think it means. That's, that's about <laughs> it. There's a great application for that particular meme, but it, it it gets even more complicated because there are different kinds of faith. Uh, there, there's a kind of faith that everyone has, and that, that is supported by evidence. Of this type of faith, no one would say that it's defined as believing in something that has no evidence. Right. It's called human faith or warranted faith, if you like. It's a faith that's warranted. It's based on past experience. Uh, in other words, there's evidence for this kind of faith. Right. Bible teacher John MacArthur describes it this way. Every time you fill your glass at the sink and drink the water and have no idea what's playing in your pipes, you yeah. exercise human faith. Every time you go to the pharmacy and you take a bottle of pills and you ingest those pills, for all you know, they're cyanide. You have absolutely no idea what's in those pills and you act on faith. That's human faith. You get in your car, you turn on the engine, you, you start a whole bunch of explosions a foot away from you <laughs> and you don't expect the engine to blow up in your face. You get on an airplane, you assume any, uh, somebody's flying it and that they're flying it to go where you want it to go. You have no idea whether that's true or not, but you trust that that's what's going on. Worst of all, you go to the hospital, they put you out, and then some guy that you've never met starts cutting you up, and you <laughs> think it's for your benefit, and you have no idea what they're doing or why they're doing it. You trust what they told you. Now, this is human faith, and the reason you do those kinds of things is because there's a track record of reliability. So your faith is based on something you know by past experience. Okay, so there's a good description of human faith or warranted faith. It's a faith warranted by evidence or experience. Now we're going to look at four different types of faith uh, today. So there's the first one. It's a faith that everyone has regardless of your beliefs, whether you're an atheist or a Bible-believing Christian or, or anything in between. Right. The type of faith that 72% of non-Christians think Christians exercise is blind faith. Blind faith is a, is right. a leap into the dark. There's no evidence or experience to warrant this kind of faith. This kind of faith was displayed in the 1989 uh, uh, third Indiana Jones movie, right? Yes. Uh, the, the scene involves Indiana Jones. He's making an, an attempt to retrieve the Holy Grail that uh, would prevent his father from dying. So, so he stands, you know, Indy stands on the, before this huge chasm that appears bottomless. He, he's got to get across, but it's far too wide to jump. So he, he has to take this step of faith or this leap of faith, right? Right, and then you see him trying to, to muster up his faith. He closes his eyes and slows his breathing and puts his hand on his heart and, and takes a step off the cliff. 
but he doesn't fall to his death due to some optical trickery uh, there, there. There's actually a bridge there. Uh, no, never mind the reasons why that wouldn't work, but <laughs> the bottom line is there was zero evidence that he was going to survive stepping off the cliff. That's blind faith. Right. Now, when we come back, we'll explain why uh, explain why that it is not the faith that Christians believe, why yes. Christians don't have a blind faith. And we'll be back. What is something that computers and humans have in common, which constantly needs upgrading in computers, but not in humans? The answer is software. You may not have realized you have software, but inside the nucleus of each of your cells, a program is written in the form of 3 billion DNA letters. Intelligent programmers write computer software, but what about living things? Evolutionists tell us that the information in the first living cell just appeared by itself with no intelligent input required. But is that possible? The answer is a resounding no. Even one of Australia's best-known scientists, Paul Davies, conceded that there is no known law of physics able to create information from nothing. And perhaps that's why, in a New Scientist article, he lamented, how did stupid atoms spontaneously write their own software. Nobody knows. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Now, if you just tuned in, this week we're talking about different kinds of faith. We just covered warranted faith and blind faith. That's two of the four types we're going to look at today. Right. According to the survey, most non-Christians think Christians have blind faith. Right. So belief in God, the events recorded in the Bible like creation, the flood, the exodus, uh, miracles, the resurrection of Jesus are all taken on blind faith. Of course, nothing could be further from the truth. Right. Christianity is based on historical events. Uh, you, you just mentioned some of them there, uh, creation, the flood, the resurrection, etc. because these things happened in an actual point in time in a real physical location on earth, not, yeah. not Mount Olympus or some far off world or, or, or something like this, and, and real people witnessed the events. The truth claims of Christianity can be investigated because they're historical events. Right. And when people honestly, that's the key, honestly investigate the true claims yes. of Christianity. It stands up to those claims. We've done shows on this uh, in, in the past, right? right. Actually, yeah. almost every one of those uh, these half-hour shows that we do provides another piece of evidence supporting the Bible. We did a, a show a few years ago called Why Christianity is True, and that yeah. summarizes a small fraction of some of these best evidences for Christianity. Right. Uh, if Christianity was simply about blind faith, what's the point of doing these shows, really? Right. Uh, if, if the Christian faith has no connection to facts at all, then we can say, just have faith and, and be done with it. Mm -hmm. uh, now, here's a diagram that shows the relationship between faith, facts, and feelings within Christianity. Right. So the engine that uh, pulls the whole system along is facts, the facts of the history that's recorded in the Bible. That's where, where it all starts. True facts about who God is, where this universe came from, where it's going, how the broken relationship between sinful people and a holy God can be mended, etc. Faith... The second car in the train is pulled along by these facts, these real events that occurred in history. Christians have faith that the facts the Bible describes are actually true. Feelings are the third car in the train. Powerful feelings are the, are the natural result of having faith in the facts the Bible describes. Right. It, it's, it's not that feelings are irrelevant. They're actually quite important. Uh, John Piper is probably the go-to guy on that subject. His main topic all his life is, is really summed up in the, in the name of his ministry, Desiring God, that has to do with uh, desires. Uh, but that's a topic for another time. Now, right now, we're talking about the relationship between facts and faith. Now, here's a key verse from the Bible revealing just how important facts are. In 1 Corinthians 15, 14, it says, And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. Right, wow. So if the fact of the resurrection of Christ is not true, then right. all of Christianity falls apart. So right. facts, that one in particular, uh, that one in particular, of course, is vital to the Christian faith. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. It's interesting how um, non-Christians, how they often perceive 
Christians, right? They, they think yes. we're, we're brainwashed, we're ignorant of the real world of rocks and fossils and, and, and physics and astronomy, et cetera. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, that sort of attitude shows up fairly often in witnessing situations and online discussions. These uh, programs are broadcast around the world on religious networks yeah. and are then put online. And there are many discussions that happen in, in, in the YouTube comment section, for example, between Christians and non-Christians. And you see this stereotype appear over and over again. Yeah, here's a, a recent discussion. The first person seems to be a Christian, and he said this, what you've been told to be science is false. Most of the world is brainwashed. You should not accept everything you are told, but research as I did. The non-Christian he was uh, chatting with replied this way, ha 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 ha, I don't know how many <laughs> H-A-H-As yeah. you can put there. It's always funny when a religious person calls someone brainwashed. <laughs> okay, so, so what's implied here? Right. People who have faith, who are religious, are brainwashed. Exactly. Right? So it's interesting that the first commenter mentioned uh, that, the, that most of the world is brainwashed. That may be an oversimplification uh, when, when, when you only hear one side of a, a two-sided issue, uh, like the creation evolution issue. Um, you know, I mean, all that's taught in publication, in, in, in public education, of course, is one side of the issue. Yeah, right? it, it is, sort of. So it's, it's very likely that yeah, you are going to be brainwashed. To, to some extent, That's yeah. right. And on that topic, uh, that actually relates to the third type of faith, and that's irrational faith. This can be defined as having faith in something in spite of the evidence against it. Right, so this really goes a step further than blind the faith. Blind faith, Because right. now there's, there's evidence against what you believe, right? Yes. So with, with, with blind uh, faith, evidence is ignored. With irrational faith, you actually believe something where evidence points, evidence points the other way. And uh, of course, we'll say a little bit more about that when we, when we come back. What are the theological consequences of adding millions of years to Genesis? How does it impact doctrines such as the gospel, sin, the atonement? Refuting compromise is the most powerful biblical and scientific defense of a straightforward view of Genesis. Loaded with scientific support for a recent creation in six real days, it demolishes all attempts to twist the biblical text in order to insert millions of years, bringing clarity into an area usually mired in confusion. Must reading for Bible college students and anyone involved in church leadership or teaching. Get your copy at creation.com. On this week's episode, we're talking about faith. Everyone has faith, and we're examining different kinds of faith. The third kind of faith we just uh, described is irrational faith. If evidences, logic, science, reason, etc., point one direction, this faith believes the opposite. Right, it's kind of like the extreme version of blind faith. Right? Right. It's like yep. blind faith on steroids or something yep. like that. <laughs> uh, Mark Twain, the famous uh, author and humorist who wrote The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, had a view of faith like this. Yes. He, he wrote... Uh, he wrote this quote, faith is believing what you know ain't so. Well, that's irrational faith. It is. <laughs> and I remember watching the 1947 version of the Christmas classic Miracle on 34th Street many, many years ago. Uh, one of the characters in the movie made a similar comment. Faith is believing when common sense tells you not to. Hmm. That comment totally ruined the movie for me. I mean, the, the whole movie was based around proving that a man named Kris Kringle really was Santa Claus and, and gathering evidence evidence to support it. Not blind faith, not irrational faith, evidence. Right. Ruin the whole movie. It's like that Indiana Jones step of faith scene, right? Yes. Um, yeah. it, it gets pretty close to this ir irrational faith too. He's, he's going against uh, his senses, logic, evidence that there, there might be a bridge there, and previous experience. His right. faith uh, really is more in the irrational faith category than, than the blind faith. In, in, in that way. Right, but, but there are comments online with that video clip from people who call themselves Christians praising that scene, saying <laughs> that, that that scene demonstrates Christian faith. Uh, right. Uh, for most Christians, that's uh, one of those kind of face palm moments, right? <laughs> like, give me a break. Uh, yep. th this is not what the Christian faith is all about. Right. It goes back to those survey results. A great majority of non-Christians and some Christians think that faith doesn't have anything to do with facts or logic or reason and, and so on. Right. Um, th there's one more kind of faith, and, and that is biblical faith. Right. It's a supernatural faith given by God to Christ followers only. 1 Corinthians 2, uh, 12 to 14 describes it this way. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. 
The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Mm. The, the spiritual truths in the Bible, they, um, they won't be understood. That is, they won't be believed uh, by faith without the Spirit of God. Right. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 highlights the same thing. It says there, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of your own doing, it is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about uh, some some human faith that you have you have to that has to be mustered up. Biblical faith doesn't originate with us. It's not of your own doing, as it says. It's not a result of works. Saving faith is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. What's remarkable is that biblical faith includes the features of warranted faith, as we said earlier. Right. The truth, uh, truths the Bible records, especially the the historical events, can be investigated. And there's a huge amount of evidence that the Bible really is the Word of God. Yeah, so biblical faith is an extension of human faith or warranted faith. Human faith alone will never get you to heaven. It may enable you to believe that the events in the Bible are true, but it will stop short of enabling you to believe the spiritual implications of those events. For example, you might come to believe that Jesus really died and really came back to life through human faith alone because those events have a huge amount of historical evidence to support them. Mm -hmm. But mere intellectual assent of those events doesn't mean that you're a Christian. Right. It's biblical, supernatural faith right. that takes you all the way. Yeah. Um, so you, you recognize that the, the Bible's truth claims about historical events are accurate, and you recognize the spiritual implications based on those events. In John 3.12, Jesus says this, If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe... How can you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? So here again, a link's made between real events that can be investigated and things that can't be seen. Right, yeah. Uh, the faith to believe the spiritual truths is linked to the faith to believe earthly truths. Uh, Hebrews 11.6 says, for example, And without faith it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a pretty obvious uh, truth there. In order, to, in order for God to save you, you've got to believe that he exists. Exactly. <laughs> Hebrews 11.1 1 provides a great definition of biblical faith. Right. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So it's an assurance of claiming the reward that God is preparing for us and a conviction that the spiritual truths revealed in Scripture are true. And we'll add a few more details when we get back. Have you ever wondered what sort of evidence would convince an atheist that the universe was designed? Scott Todd from Kansas State University gave a startling answer. Even if all the data pointed to an intelligent designer, such an hypothesis is excluded from science because it is not naturalistic. Well, candid admissions like this show us that some people will reject a designer no matter what the evidence. But recognizing design has long been a part of science. When an archaeologist finds an artifact like a piece of pottery, he knows immediately that it was designed by someone, even though he can't see the designer. So if design has no place in science, archaeologists are in serious trouble. Forensic science, Who Killed Who, is also about recognizing the evidence of intelligent agency, proving that it was no accident. But when the evidence in science points to God being the intelligent designer, never. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Uh, our subject this week is faith. What is it? Uh, what are the different types of faith? And uh, we also said that everyone has faith. Those are some of the things we've covered already. Right, but not everyone <laughs> shares the same faith. Right. We just showed how biblical faith applies only to Christians, but everyone exercises human faith and a variety of the other two types. Uh, right. Another key aspect of faith is, is what it produces. Your beliefs determine your behavior. So it isn't just a personal thing that, you, that, that, that only affects the individual. Your personal faith influences your behavior, your, your actions, how you live your life, your, your sense of right and wrong, for example, the truths that you will stand up for and defend and, and, and what you vote for, that kind of thing. Uh, those things affect the people around you and ultimately society in general. And, and of, co of course, uh, the Bible isn't silent on this aspect of, of uh, um, biblical faith either. Right. In, in the book of James in the Bible, um, he, he, uh, James wrote this, So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. 
So, yes, uh, there is another kind of faith called dead faith, right. and there are other yep. types as well. Um, the four types that we're talking about today don't really exhaust all the types of faith, but anyway. Uh, Martin Luther, the, the great reformer, echoed what James wrote when he said, We are not saved by works, but if there be no works, there must be something amiss, amiss with faith. All right. So, so biblical faith, if it's real, will result in outward behavioral change, which affects the, the way you live. Works are the evidence yep. that true biblical faith has actually taken root and fulfilled in your life. Yeah, yeah. Luther is credited with saying, uh, he said this, we are saved by faith alone, but faith that saves is never alone. Now, he's referring to biblical faith, but that principle that beliefs determine behavior applies to all types of faith. Uh, give an example. If I believe that McDonald's hamburgers are delicious, what works, what <laughs> actions will that belief, that faith, ultimately produce? Yeah, you're probably going to go buy a McDonald's hamburger, right? <laughs> hamburger, absolutely. My beliefs determine my behavior. So let's relate everything about faith that we've been summarizing for the past 20 minutes or so to the origins debate. People believe things about the past. You certainly do. <laughs> everyone, uh, regardless of whether you lean toward creation or evolution, everyone believes something about the past. Right. So as biblical creationists, we believe that the Bible uh, accurately re records uh, history, of course. So the, the Bible forms the basis for our, our beliefs about the past. Evolutionists, they don't have any uh, written account, no testimony at all about what they believe um, you know, supposedly happened millions of years ago. But both sides exercise faith, of course. Right, this goes back to a key feature of the origins debate, something that we've mentioned many times before in, in previous episodes, previous shows, all we have today are facts, fossils, rocks, stars, etc. And when we and, and when considering how those facts got to be there, we try to fit the facts into what, whatever history right. we hold to be true by faith. Science involves making observations about the world around us, so the origins debate does involve science, but then faith kicks in on both sides of the debate because both sides are making pronouncements about what happened in the past and that's outside of science. Exactly, picture it like this. Um, you know, here's the creationist and here's the evolutionist. Both positions believe in naturalism. That is, the, the universe operates according to fixed laws that don't change. Actually, science would be impossible if the natural laws changed all the time. Right. Yeah. On the evolutionist side, we could add a further definition that applies almost universally. They are anti-supernaturalists. Right, uh, the, the anti-supernatural crowd self-censors all scientific evidence pointing to creation. In fact, they'll say that there isn't any. <laughs> That's as common, no, there's no evidence for creation. No. Their belief, their faith position, their religion, if you like, require that the origin of the universe is explained by the same natural laws that govern the operation of the universe. Right. Uh, on the other hand, Bible-believing scientists recognize that those laws are insufficient to account for the origin of the universe. Right. Um, does that sound complicated? I guess we'll, we'll look at an example to help clarify how this works when we get back. Everyone likes to get things for free. Thanks to donors at Creation Ministries International, we have put great effort into making huge amounts of faith-building information freely available online. Creation.com now has more than 8,000 articles. Some of CMI's most popular books are in PDF format to read online for free. All episodes of Creation Magazine Live and other teaching videos are online at no charge. Consider making a donation, enabling us to continue producing free faith-building information. Okay, let's look at a real example to clarify how faith drives both sides of the creation evolution issue. Sure, we can use the example of the law of biogenesis. Life right. begets life. This is attributed to Louis Pasteur and uh, there's never been a single observational example of this law being broken. That's why right. it's the most established scientific laws. Life does not arise from non-living material. It's a fact of science with mountains of evidence supporting it. Right. Creationists accept that scientific fact. Yep. But evolutionists have to say that the law was broken at least once. Right. That life did come from non-life. Note that this goes against natural laws and against observations. This is, this is where it really gets interesting because what kind of faith is that? Well, 
Oh dear, <laughs> that's that's firmly in the category of irrational faith, it right? Is. It goes against our observations. So, yeah. um, ha having you know that that's defined as having faith in something in spite of the evidence against it. So the belief in evolution over millions of years uh, really involves th this example anyway. Aspects of irrational faith. Chemical evolution is an irrational faith. Right. Yeah. And now, what about Bible believers and Bible believing scientists? we have no problem understanding how life could have arisen because we don't deny the supernatural. Right. That something is above nature. And that is exactly what's needed to get life here. Naturalism fails to account for the origin of life. But we're not forced to explain the origin of life through naturalistic means alone. The evolutionists are. Right. Scientific laws are descriptive of what we observe happening regularly. It doesn't mean that God couldn't, at various points in history, alter or add to those laws. Right. So in the origins debate, the biblical creationist position doesn't involve going against observational science, while at the same time, you know, we're, we remain open to God's involvement. For sure. Uh, there isn't a single scientific observation that creationists reject. We don't reject science. We reject the evolutionist version of history. Yep. Uh, our beliefs about the past don't involve irrational faith. They involve human faith, a, a warranted faith, warranted by scientific observations, by logic and reason and so on, and, and, and biblical faith, obviously, where God has revealed spiritual truths about the reason for the creation in the first place and our place in it. Yeah, there's a great uh, article called Miracles and Science Yes, um, on, on our website. It covers the relationship between the two in far more detail than we can do here in this short time. So you can go to creation.com slash miracles and, uh, and you can check that, that article out. Yeah, we can do another example of, uh, of a rational faith. Dinosaur soft tissue, right. for the last 30 years, and, and we've reported, this, uh, reported on this on the website as well. Dinosaur soft tissue and different types of protein, uh, blood cells, blood vessels, even dinosaur DNA over the last 20 years or so, yeah. over 30 instances of biological structures like this have been found in dinosaur bones. Right. National Geographic had an article saying that most of the fossils we have in museums probably contain soft tissue. Yeah. So if they're willing to make a statement like that, that probably all of, you know, let's say, let's say 50% even yeah. of dinosaur bones that we find have soft tissue in them. Well, everything we know about the laws of chemistry, and evolutionists have come out and made statements like this, right? That yes. Even if, yeah. if you could take, uh, um, you know, dinosaur soft tissue or any kind of soft tissue and, and preserve it, you know, freeze it and, and, and put it at the optimum conditions, after six million years, chemically it would break down. Right. Even if you could preserve it somehow, the environment, but chemically, things break down. Right, and that's, so that's what science says. Yes. Those types of things are not gonna last back to the age of dinosaurs, when dinosaurs apparently- 65 million years. According to evolution, they all went extinct 65 million yeah. years ago, that kind of thing, yeah. and uh, it's not going to last that long. So that's what science and logic and reason say, right. yet what does evolution say? The exactly. dinosaurs are 65 million years old. Exactly the opposite. Yeah. Now, do we have a problem with that as biblical creationists? No. Right. That material, we understand, could not last that long what does it fit with? Biblical history. Right, now an evolutionist will say, yeah, but there's other data that shows the dinosaurs live millions of years old, because look at all the rock layers that are supposedly 65 million years where yeah. we find the dinosaur bones. <laughs> but that's not been observed either. So that's Amazing. a challenge. Next week, we're going to look at uh, arguments for abortion and refute uh, pro-abortion arguments next week on Creation Magazine Live. We'll see you then.